Hi, welcome to Miss Richardson's U.S. History 5-Minute Lectures. This information will be U.S. Notes 3.11, the Yalta Conference. It includes information that's aligned with the third section on your Unit 3 study guide. Make sure you're using that study guide to help you take your notes. And remember, you have control over the lecture, so pause when you need, write down your questions, and rewatch as often as you want. Let's go ahead and get started. Before FDR's death and Truman's presidency, some important decisions regarding the end of World War II were made by the Allied powers. The decisions made at the Yalta Conference laid a framework for peace after the war. The Yalta Conference was held in Yalta, hence the name, which was in the Soviet Union. In February of 1945, roughly three months before the end of the war in Europe, the Big Three, that's what they get called, Franklin Roosevelt from the U.S., Joseph Stalin from the Soviet Union, and Winston Churchill from Great Britain all met together in Yalta to plan post-World -war, War Europe. At this point, these men had not yet won the war, but the tide had turned in their favor and they could see that the German surrender was imminent and they would be making the peace decisions as the victors. Several agreements that were made here at Yalta would have very long-lasting effects. What were these Yalta agreements? Well, first, the Soviet Union agreed to join the U.S. in the war against Japan. Up until this point, the Soviet Union had focused on the European theater of war and had not really helped us in the Pacific. They agreed to actually shift their troops, once we had defeated Germany, to shift their troops, their supplies, and support, all to help defeat Japan in the Pacific. Another area of the world that decisions had to be made about was Poland. So Poland had been invaded by Germany, but had now been freed, and Churchill wanted a free, independent Poland, so Britain was pushing for that. Stalin wanted Poland to be an ally of the Soviet Union and a buffer nation between them and the rest of Europe to kind of protect them. So the compromise was that Poland would be free, but the Soviet Union would get to help them hold elections for an independent government. So the Soviet Union would have some influence there. Those elections they promised were never held. So they made the promise, but broke it. The next agreement that was made by the Big Three was the Declaration of the Liberated Europe. All three countries pledged to, keep, to support countries freed from German aggression in rebuilding and creating new governments. So they would try to create these new democratic governments all throughout Europe, and all the countries wanted to see that happen, these independent countries. Germany itself was also discussed at the Yalta Conference. The Allied powers agreed to split the country up to limit its power, a decision that most, was mostly pushed by Stalin because he feared a strong German state. The split, they split Germany into four zones, one each to the U.S., Great Britain, the Soviet Union, and France. Here you can see a map that kind of shows how they divided it. They also split Berlin, the German capital, in the same way. Berlin sat in the Russian zone of Germany, but each country controlled a portion of Berlin. Ultimately, the U.S., Great Britain, and France actually combined their three zones together to create the country of West Germany. The Soviet Union zone then became known as East Germany, and these countries actually existed up and through the, until the end of the 1980s. Finally, all the countries discussed reparations, or payment, for war damages and costs. Knowing that the severe treatment of Germany at the end of World War I actually allowed for the rise of Hitler, the group chose to be a little more lenient and less harsh in their World War II decisions regarding the repayment of war and war expenses. Each country had specific goals in mind when they met at Yalta. FDR desired to support to gain support in Asia, Stalin wanted security and a buffer from further invasions, and Great Britain wanted democracy throughout Europe. FDR, however, would not actually get to see any of these goals met. So the, although he attended the Yalta Conference, he actually passed away just a few months later on April 12th of 1945. It was one, less than one month before the end of World War II in Europe. This actually led to a deteriorated U.S.-Soviet relations because Stalin did not actually like or respect Truman, who became the new U.S. president. He had really liked FDR and respected him as a leader. So it actually created more tension between the two countries when FDR died. 
That shift caused changes in the final decisions for peace, and those changes also had lasting effects far beyond 1945. So the decisions were made at Yalta, but some of those things changed by the end of the actual war. So this is the end of your U.S. Notes 3.11. Hopefully you learned something, and if you have any questions, make sure you bring those to me in class.